a law banning treatments for transgender youth, including cross-sex hormones and so-called puberty blockers, is set to take effect next month in Arkansas, and that state is the first to enact such a measure. The Justice Department is now challenging the ban and argues it violates the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Republican Governor Asa Hutchinson, meanwhile, vetoed the bill back in April, but the GOP-controlled House and Senate voted to override that veto. In a new episode of 60 Minutes Plus, correspondent Seth Doan spoke with one teenager at the center of a widening legal battle over the bill in Arkansas. Dylan Brandt, who legally changed his first name last year, is now a plaintiff in a lawsuit along with three other transgender youth, their families and two doctors, filed by the American Civil Liberties Union. The suit takes issue with Arkansas House Bill 1570, first passed in March, which bans for minors what's known as gender-affirming medical care, which helps a transgender person with their physical transition. I'm on uh, testosterone, and I've been on that for 10 months. You'd lose that if this law yes. goes into effect? Yes. What do you think about that? It's, it's horrible. I was really insecure with myself and not happy before this. I had a lot of depression. I, it, it, was, it was really hard. Brandt is one of the roughly 2% of U.S. high schoolers who identify as trans. With his little brother by his side, as he began transitioning at 13, he chronicled bits of it on TikTok, which his family gave us permission to show. He went from long blonde hair to appearing more masculine. With psychological counseling and under supervision from a pediatrician, he started taking cross-sex hormones okay, you ready? You ready? by injecting testosterone. My name is Dylan. This is my voice one day on T. This is my voice two months on T. Marveling as his voice dropped. This is my voice seven months on testosterone. And nationwide, more than 30 bills would restrict the access of trans kids to gender-affirming medical care. Those bills have been introduced this year alone. Uh, and Seth Doan joins us now uh, from Athens, Greece, not Arkansas. More on that in a second. Uh, but important story here. Seth, good morning to you. Uh, this ACLU lawsuit, could that affect the Arkansas law uh, going into effect in July? Yes, Tony, good morning. They are seeking an injunction, and they say it really depends on what the judge says, but they hope to block that law from going into effect. And as you noted in the intro into our story, they got a little boost late last week from the Department of Justice, which issued that a statement of interest supporting the ACLU lawsuit. But it really depends on what the judge says. The ACLU, we spoke with Chase Strangio, who's the one of the lawyers who will be arguing this case, and he says he believes it is clearly unconstitutional for for instance, uh, someone who's not transgender, a young person going through puberty too early could take a puberty blocker, but a transgender person in the state of Arkansas after this law goes into effect in July could not. So he says it's clearly discriminating against a certain group of people. It's early, but how might this law or how has this law affected trans youth so far? Well, you saw Dylan Brandt. He's the main character, the person who is one of the one of the four transgender youth who are behind this lawsuit, along with two doctors and the families of the transgender youth. Dylan took us through his experience of really a, a, a psychological journey for a long time of just feeling like he was not in his own skin. Doctors say this can, that, that his outsides didn't match his insides. And doctors say these feelings can happen as young as two to five years old. And then working with doctors, this, this gender affirming care can begin a little bit later. All right, Seth Doan on a very important story.